all right guys welcome back to my channel we still we are on to question four on a 2019 cape pyramids unit one pass paper all right and this paper is turned sideways so i'm gonna have to write important pieces of information so let me just quickly go ahead and read it it says a circle with equation x squared and that's important so let me write that there x squared plus y squared minus 2x minus 4y minus 5 equals 0. All right, we are told that a straight line with equation y equal 2x plus 5 intersects a circle at the points a and b. Now, for this part, all I want from you is the center of the circle. Now, the center of the circle, we typically represent it as a coordinate a, b. Now, when you want the center of the circle alone, there's a pretty easy way to do it. As long as the coefficient of x squared and y squared is 1, then all I have to do, and that's positive 1, is to find half the coefficient of x and y and half and change the signs and I have the center of the circle. So the center of the circle would be half a negative 2 is negative 1, change the sign to a positive 1, and half a negative 4 is 2, change the sign to a positive 2. So the center of the circle is therefore going to be 1, 2, just like that, right? Not much work you have to do there. All right, let's go down now to the second sheet and see what that has to offer. Let me go across here and scroll across. And it says, show that the coordinates of A and B are 0, 5, and negative 2, 1, and BC is perpendicular to AC. So first of all, A and B represent the points where the line intersects a circle. So I'm going to need back the equation of a circle, which is x squared plus y squared minus 2x minus 4y minus 5 equals 0. That is equation 1. And of course, you have y equal 2x plus 5 we can call this equation 2. now what we have here is a pair with a nonlinear equation and a linear equation and there is only one method that can be used and that's substitution so i'm going to sub equation 1 equation 1 well sub equation 2 which is the linear equation sorry in equation 1. so wherever you have y you're going to put 2x plus 5. so this implies x squared plus 2x plus 5 all squared minus 2x minus 4 times 2x plus 5 minus 5 equal to 0. So my job here now is to expand and simplify this. And of course, we realize that we have a perfect square, so we're going to be using the shortcut. So it's x squared plus 2x squared is going to give me 4x squared. Then we go 2x times 5, that's 10 times 2, that's 20x plus the second term squared says that's going to give me 25 minus 2x minus 8x minus 20 minus 5 equals 0. Let's mark this up. x squared plus 4x squared is going to give me 5x squared. 20x minus 2x minus 8x simply leaves me with a positive 10x. And then 25 minus 20 minus 5 is 0. So that's gone. All right, you come down to the point now. Where we have a nonlinear equation, so we actually have to factorize it to solve it. It's quadratic. Now we can take out a 5x, which leaves me with x plus 2 equals 0. This implies that either 5x equals 0 or x plus 2 equals 0. We don't need to show any steps here. x is either 0 or x equal minus 2. But those are just the x coordinates. We need a y coordinate. So what do we say? When x equals 0, y equal, or we're using the linear equation, 2 times 0 plus 5, y equal 5. So we can state that a has coordinate 0, 5. What about b? All right, so same concept. You're going to put negative 2 in the place of x here. So you're going to have 2 times negative 2, which is negative 4, plus 5 is 1. So you're going to have negative 2, 1 as a second coordinate. So there we go. We have the coordinates for A and B. That, pre that part pretty much is it. But now we have to prove that AC and BC are perpendicular. And of course, we're going to be using the concept of gradient there. So once we can prove that a gradient, the product of the gradient is negative 1, then that is true. All right. So let's start by... So we know that the formula for the gradient, M is equal to Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. Let us lay out A and C first. A, of course, here is 0, 5. C would have been 1, 2. 
let me go over this side now and say that b would have been negative 2 1 and c of course is still 1 2 so we're going to call the first gradient m1 and we're going to call the second gradient m2 all right so i'm going to have m1 over here y2 i can call it 2 minus 5 over 1 minus 0 so m1 is equal to negative 3 on this side m2 would be 2 minus 1 over 1 minus minus 2 this is one third all right and the statement is that if perpendicular m1 times m2 is equal to negative 1 now let us check if that is true all right so you're going to have negative 3 times one third so negative 3 times one third would be equal to negative 1 negative 1 equal to negative 1 so clearly ac and bc are perpendicular it doesn't like way to say that they meet at right angle right so that's why i'm using the right angle symbol once they meet at right angle they are perpendicular and i would have wrapped up that part of the question so you have to have your coordinate geometry intact right and there you get a lot of space that was eight marks now determine the equation of a tangent to the circle c at point a or point b so you have an option here you can either work with point a or you can choose to work with point b that is up to you now let's say i decide to work with point a and one of the first things i'm going to do is to draw a circle to make my life easier remember that the center is one two that's out there if i'm working with a point a was at zero five all right so i draw i draw the tangent now bear in mind this is a normal now this is ac we found the gradient of ac already which is a gradient of the normal that was equal to if i'm not wrong let me go back up to verify that that, that was equal to negative three all right so that was equal to negative three now bear in mind what is the relationship between the gradient and the tangent they are perpendicular so if the gradient of a normal is negative three the gradient of a tangent is positive one third hmm. we have everything we need we have a point at the tangent passes through we have the gradient so we go y minus y1 equal mt into x minus x1 so that's y minus 5 is equal to 1 third into x minus 0. All right, let's go. We don't want any fraction, so we have 3y minus 15. That's because we multiply both sides by the denominator here, and this will be equal to x. Now, in the form that we're going to put the line, we're going to have x and y then constant, so we're going to take everything to the right-hand side. So it becomes x minus 3y plus 15 equal to 0. And that there is the equation of my line, all right, of my tangent to be more specific. All right, so make sure you know your coordinate geometry. Simple concepts are what you use when dealing with a circle. All right, we're on to vectors. It says the point P, Q, and R are three vertices of a parallelogram PQRS. Express PQ and QR in the form that. Now, what is the simple lesson I'm going to teach you here? that every point on the Cartesian plane can be represented as a position vector. So for example, point P can be really, can really be written as OP as 3i minus j plus 2k. All right. Point Q can be written as OQ as a vector, which is i plus 2j minus 4k. And OR can be written as minus i plus j minus 2k all right now what do they all have in common they're all coming from the origin so that's a central point so if i want to find pq i'm gonna have to go from p to o and then i pick up at o and i go to q all right now we have op so po is the negative of it so i'm gonna have to change the signs so i'm gonna have negative 3i plus j minus 2k all right oq remains i plus 2j minus 4k all right looking at the like terms negative 3i plus i that's negative 2i j plus 2j that's 3j and of course negative 2k minus 4k that's minus 6k that part is taken care of right what if i want qr 
I can go from Q to O and then from O to R. All right, good. Let me just go down to get some space here. All right. Now, so I'm going to take this down here. QO is negative OQ. All right, so it's going to be minus I minus 2J plus 4K. OR means as minus I plus J minus 2K. All right, look for like terms again. That's minus 2I uh, minus J. And of course, you have 4K here minus 2K. That's 2K. All right, so we have both vectors. We have O, we have PQ, and we have QR. That is what was being asked for. Now it says, show that the vector S equal negative 16J minus 8K is parallel, is perpendicular to the plane through PQR. Please understand this concept. Well. Let me just give you an idea. Let us say you put a little plane right there. And you have something that is perpendicular to the plane. Right? Now, once something is perpendicular to the plane, it's going to be perpendicular to any vector lying in the plane. So for this to be perpendicular to the plane, it has to be perpendicular to P. What, what do we find? PQ. I'm going to go back up. It has to be perpendicular to PQ and to QR. Now, what happens when two things, when two vectors are perpendicular? What it means is that PQ dot s is equal to zero the dot product is zero as long as the vectors are perpendicular and qr dot s equal to zero so i just need to go back up and find out what pq was let's go pq was negative 2i plus 3j minus 6k all right so negative 2i plus 3j minus 6k all of that dot negative 16j minus 8k should give me zero now when taking a dot product we take a dot product of corresponding components there's i in the first bracket no i in the second bracket that is zero all right so that's gone so i'm gonna have three times negative 16 minus six times negative eight should be zero this is negative 48 plus 48 all right so zero equals zero so that's true over there now let's test the second vector the second vector qr is actually equal to negative 2i minus j plus 2k all right let's go negative 2i minus j plus 2k all right dot negative 16j minus 8k should give me zero same concept apply over here so i'm gonna have negative 1 times negative 16 Plus 2 times negative 8 should give me 0. Alright, this is 16 minus 16 equals 0. 0 equals 0. So clearly, it is true. Alright, you can write your statement. Therefore, these two vectors are perpendicular to the plane. Alright, through PQR. Very simple statement there. No problem. Alright, let's take this down now and see what they have to offer us. Determine the Cartesian equation of a plane through P, Q, and R. Now, to get the Cartesian equation, we start out first with a vector equation, which is R dot N equal D. Of course, this is not the standard form. The standard form would involve me using the unit vector for the normal, and that would give me the distance of a plane from the origin, right? But we just want a Cartesian equation, so no rush. Now, R is any point on the plane. N is a vector per perpendicular to the plane which you know already let me put that here negative 16 j minus 8 k in this case these are random constant and we need to find that all right r i can use any point so let me go back up and pick a random point probably i could use point p let's see p was which is op position vector was 3i minus j plus 2k all right so 3i minus j plus 2k all right and probably i could state that i'm using p right using p r equal p r, r equal op 
Now, expanding this, I'm going to have negative 1 times negative 16 plus 2 times negative 8 equal to D. This boils down to give me 0 equal D, which tells me that this plane must pass through the origin. Now, this is just the value for D. What you want is the Cartesian equation, which means that technically speaking, what I'm going to have to do is that I'm going to have to come up here where I have R. Bear in mind that R is any point on the plane. So to get a Cartesian equation, we generalize R. So we use R as Xi plus Yj plus Zk. Any point on the Cartesian plane would have a, in the three-dimensional plane, sorry, would have X, Y, Z coordinate. Times my normal, negative 16J minus 8K is equal to D, which is 0. And of course, you know, you multiply the corresponding components. So in this case, I is out because there's no I in the second bracket. I'm going to have negative 16Y minus 8Z equals 0. All right. Tidy this up, make it look pleasant. We can divide by negative 8. So we have 2Y plus Z equals 0. Or we could even say 2Y, Z equal negative 2Y. All right. 